Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, as we gathered here to give thanks and praise for the 175 years of inauguration for worship and thanksgiving to our God, as we stepping into faith, looking up to God for our beloved diocese. The theme for this service, from generation to generation, we proclaim your praise. Psalm 79, 13. May God, who crowns the ages with goodness, be with you. And also with you. Lord, for the years your love has kept and guided us and inspired us, cheered us on our way, sought us and saved us, pardoned and provided, Lord of the years, we bring our thanks today, Lord, for that word, the word of which fires us, speaks to our hearts, and sets our souls ablaze. Teach us and trains, rebukes us and inspires us, Lord of the world, receive your people's praise. Lord, for our generation spirits oppressed by pleasure wealth and care for young and old for commonwealth and nation lord of our land be pleased to hear our prayer lord for our when we disown and doubt you, loveless in strength and comfortless in pain, hungry and helpless, lost indeed without you, Lord of the world, we pray that Christ may Then be your people, the sheep of your pasture, will praise you forever. From generation to generation, we proclaim your praise. Blessed be God. Blessed be God, reign forever. Amen. Let us seek forgiveness and renewal of our hearts and minds for the times when we fail to be faithful to God's mission, when our own agendas superseded God's will. For God's church, let us confess our sins in penitence and in faith. You called us to be the salt and the light in the nation. Forgive our failures to be a witnessing community. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For divisions created by us and lack of unity as a body of Christ. Forgive us for sowing seeds of enmity. Christ, have mercy. 
Christ have mercy. Forgive us our selfish ways that made us stray from the path of truth and selfless love. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May the God, the Trinity, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit forgive you and raise you to be transformed life so that you may offer life to others. Amen. Amen. ourselves to God. Hail and God to make Sri Lanka so wonderfully fair. Pour your Holy Spirit on your church that all the peoples of our land being led through the knowledge of your truth and your loving kindness and to worship you in the beauty of holiness may present the gold of intellect, the frankings of devotion and the myrrh of discipline to the one who is the light of the world, even our Lord Jesus Christ, who with you, the ultimate reality that you are in the Holy Spirit, lives and reigns as one God. Peace, peace, peace. Amen. Amen. The Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 61, the year of the Lord's favor, verses from 4 to 9. They will rebuild the ancient ruins and restore the places long devastated. They will renew the ruined cities that have been devastated for generations. Aliens will shepherd your flocks. Foreigners will work your fields and vineyards. And you will be called priests of the Lord. You will be named ministers of our God. You will feed on the wealth of nations. And in their riches you will boast. 
instead of their shame my people will receive a double portion and instead of disgrace they will rejoice their inheritance and so they will inherit a double portion in their land and everlasting joy will be theirs for i the lord love justice i hate robbery and iniquity in my faithfulness i will reward them and make an everlasting covenant with them their descendants will be known among the nations and their offsprings among the peoples all who see them will acknowledge that they are a people the lord has blessed this is the word of the lord thanks be to god Let us rid ourselves of everything that gets in the way and of the sin which holds on to us so tightly and let us run with determination the race that lies before us Let us keep our eyes fixed on Jesus on whom our faith depends from beginning to end He did not give up because of the cross on the contrary because of the joy that was waiting for him He thought nothing of the disgrace of dying on the cross and he is now seated at the right hand side of God's throne. Think of what he went through. How he put up so much hatred from sinners. So do not let yourselves become discouraged and give up. For in your struggle against sin, you have not yet had to resist to the point of being killed. Have you forgotten the encouraging words which God speaks to you as his sons? My son, pay attention when the Lord corrects you, and do not be discouraged when he rebukes you, because the Lord corrects everyone he loves and punishes everyone he accepts as a son. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. and 
manger of the just raise up one human race equal in one embrace my wars and conflicts see Unto our fastened hands and open up our lands till all share a common space. Amazing grace, so wide, so wise, create. Revent our endless strife against your gifts of life. Set your whole creation free. Amazing grace, so wide, so just. The hope of all rests down in fear and tyranny, he wounds of misery. Then, Lord, may your kingdom Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Alle, alle. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 25, beginning at verse 1 to 13. Glory be to Christ, our Saviour. At that time, the kingdom of heaven will be like ten virgins, who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The foolish ones took their lamps but did not take any oil with them. The wise ones, however, took oil in jars along with their lamps. The bridegroom was a long time in coming, and they all became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight the cry rang out, Here's the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all the virgins woke up and trimmed their lamps. The foolish ones said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, our lamps are going out. No, they replied. There may not be enough for both us and you. Instead, go to those who sell oil and buy some for yourselves. But while they were on their way to buy the oil, the bridegroom arrived. The virgins who were ready went in with him to the wedding banquet, and the door was shut. Later the others also came. Lord, Lord, they said, open the door for us. But he replied, truly I tell you, I don't know you. Therefore keep watch, because you do not know the hour, the day or the hour. This is the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise be to Christ our Lord.
in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers and children in Christ, I would like to begin these words by thanking Bishop Dushi for placing me before the camera. I must confess, this is a bit of a strange experience. But when a brand new bishop calls, one must answer. Perhaps as he settles in his seat, it might later on become a little easier to say, not yet, or on another occasion. Today we celebrate an extremely important and special occasion in the life of our diocese. God has been with us and blessed us and led us through 175 years of witness and ministry in this beautiful country and our primary response to him is one of gratitude to God and to those our spiritual fathers and mothers who passed on their spirituality and formed us to become the men and women that we are today. Anniversaries are sometimes kept a little bit like the way we drive. You have to glance into your rear mirror now and again if you are to keep your eyes focused on the road ahead. And so, to take a quick look at the early days of our life as Anglicans in this country, I would like to make three brief observations. The first is that Anglican presence precedes the establishment of our diocese by 40 to 50 years. And during that period, our work was done in two waves. There was initially the work of colonial chaplains, English chaplains who came down to our country to serve the colonial community. It was when the missionary organizations, the London Missionary Society, the Church Missionary Society, the United Society for the Propagation of the Gospel, came over to Sri Lanka that our work really began with the people of this country. These missionaries came to serve and to die in the country in which they served. And so they went to all corners of our land and adapted a particular style of mission, which I think we need to take note of. They set up schools and through the education of children and sometimes adults, they passed on the gospel. Now, they did this in a very interesting way. The school room became the place of worship on a Sunday. And this was to convey that the God of all knowledge was the God, the living God, whom we worshipped. So this then was the situation into which 
our pioneer bishop, James Chapman, and his dear wife, Frances, came. From the beginning, it was clear that Bishop James was keen to understand the church as it then existed and the country. So he spends a great deal of his time in traveling the length and the breadth of the island, mostly on horseback, crossing rivers, climbing mountains, taking risks as he went through malaria and cholera infested regions just to reach scattered Anglican groups and to encourage them, to remind them that they were part of a bigger family and to remind them that they were placed where they were placed so that they could serve God. So we see here unfolding in this dynamic pioneer bishop of ours a ministry of encouragement going to the people encouraging them to be faithful in Christ encouraging them to remember that we were one family now this kind of work that he did was not simply from the heart Bishop James Chapman followed a method he deployed the limited human resources that we had as best as he could. He distributed the limited finances that we had as best as he could. And then he observed the work that was being done, assessed its strengths and its weaknesses, and then addressed discrepancies. I can give you a couple of instances of how this happened. On one occasion, when he discovered that the Anglican leadership of Trincomalee was much more dynamic than that of Batiklo, he asked Trincomalee to have oversight over Batiklo. On another instance, when he learned that the training of our catechists left much to be desired, he set aside part of the work that his own chaplain was doing so that he could attend to the training and the formation of catechists. Now in this method, Bishop James reminded us that a bishop is a supervisor, but is also quite different to the kind of road supervisor that you see around. He supervised so that he could form. And so, in a nutshell, the strength of Bishop James Chapman was to give us these two lasting gifts. That a bishop, and certainly the clergy with the bishop, and certainly the laity with the clergy, are expected to engage in a ministry of encouragement on the one hand, and formation on the other. His episcopate in this country lasted 15 years. And when it came to an end, we see a paradox. He left behind for us a reasonably healthy diocese, but that was at the cost of his own health that had suffered somewhat. And so when he and Francis returned to England, they return as a couple who were exhausted. They had spent of themselves for the work of God. They were the seed that had fallen to the ground and died to bear good fruit. Now what then do we have to say about the road ahead? We have taken a glance at the prayer mirror. What about the road ahead. Whichever way we look at where we are currently, 
the church is faced with two crises. There is the virus crisis, where a sinister disease is lurking among us, seeking whom it may devour. And then there is the crisis in governance, where very surreptitiously democratic institutions are being weakened and democratic values are being compromised. So if this is what it looks like from the driving seat, how do we move forward? The text that was read as the gospel gives us some insights and wisdom on how this might be done. This is the parable of the ten young women. The five wise young women teach us what Christian hope is all about. It's about the Lamb and the Lord working to trim the lamb while watching for the intervention of the Lord. Now it is these two components when put together that makes Christian hope. Work alone is a compromise. Watching alone is a compromise. We are expected to watch and to work, to work, and to watch. Now, in a sense, some good work has taken place as we have steered our way through the virus crisis. All over this country, people are rediscovering the dynamic of the neighbor concept. Men and women and many of them from the church, are responding to the needs of their neighbor. Those who can offer material support to those in financial crisis. There's a sharing of food. There's a sharing of information where what can be got. There's a great deal of counseling that takes place very often over the telephone. And there's some interesting and inspiring material that is shared over social media. So spontaneously, without a pastoral letter, without a request from the pulpit, people are learning that we need to look after each other through life and particularly as we face a crisis. Now, as we continue this work, we ought to watch for an intervention that the Lord will make in transforming the nature of our congregations. This energy of people mindful of their neighbor caring for their neighbor, serving their neighbor, must become part of the life of our congregations and our diocese. So we must be careful that when the Lord is telling us to go back with this energy, we don't undo that energy and return to the earlier structures of our parishes. A few people at the top, active, and the majority at the bottom, passive. If we can do this and receive the intervention of our Lord, then all our communities will become pastoral communities of generosity, pastoral communities of believers, pastoral communities of those who follow Christ. How do we apply this understanding of hope to a crisis in governance? Here, I think we need to reverse the order. Rather than work and watch, we should watch and work. 
because our work in this area has been thin. So if you look to the previous interventions that God has made in the life of the church and in the life of the world, you will see this long tradition of what is known as Catholic social thought, or if you like, universal Christian social thought. The heart of which is how a disciple of Jesus can also become a responsible citizen of the country. The rhythm between discipleship and citizenship. We've had many in our own diocese who have supported this tradition and passed on the richness of its teaching to us, both in word and in deed. And so we need to return to this, drawing from those resources, conducting studies, teaching, writing Christian social thought into the everyday life of our diocese and our parish in such a way that our people will realize that you cannot be a responsible disciple of Jesus unless you are a responsible citizen of this country. It is from there that we will continue to watch what is happening in the country and respond and act as disciples of the one Lord. So maybe sum these thoughts up. The tradition that our pioneer bishop left us was a ministry of encouragement and formation. And as we respond to the two crises we talked about, we ought to be able to draw from and recognize these same two traditions of encouragement and formation encouraging our neighbor and a formation that produces good citizens. When we do this, we walk in the path of our pioneer bishop. And if we can sustain this through the years ahead, then this huge institution known as the church, which very often embarrasses us, will gradually get transformed into the body of Christ what it must become, the body of Christ, the body of the followers of Christ who recognize Jesus as our head. To him be all glory and honor, praise and thanksgiving now and always. Let's be quiet for a little while. A prayer for our diocese. God, give us grateful hearts for your goodness to our diocese in spite of ourselves, our trivialities and selfishness. God, also give us courageous hearts that will make us still pursue your purposes in spite of ourselves, our trivialities and selfishness. Amen. Prayers of the people. Let us pray for the Church of Ceylon, especially the Diocese of Colombo, as she celebrates 175 years. Holy Spirit, sustain your Church to serve as co-workers in your mission, that we may be active agents of your love and presence amongst the broken and wounded in society. By your grace, help us to be the church in every given situation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. Let us pray thanking God for the women and men, both clergy and laity, who gave of their lives in the service of humanity, for those who took Christ to the people and brought Christ to every situation, to their life example. We thank you for the installment of faith which was brought and planted in our hearts and for those who nurtured it through their commitment to Christ. Give us the same enthusiasm to bear the cross in our witness and service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Let us pray for God's creation amidst the realities of us abusing this gift for global warming and climate change. Creator God, we come to you seeking a renewal of heart and mind. Help us to love our neighbor, Mother Nature, and all living beings that share this space with us. Help us to regain our place in being your stewards of creation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Let us pray for a world being struck down by the COVID-19 virus, for all victims of the virus, all healthcare workers, and all who risk their own safety to protect others. Lord Jesus Christ, may your healing embrace be with all who are sick, and may the grace of your resurrection be upon all who are mentally down. May you strengthen all those who self, self, serve selflessly for the welfare of others following your example of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Let us pray and thank God for the rich diversity that we enjoy and seek God's wisdom to enjoy the diversity placed in our midst and to experience the triune God who has called us to unity and to share the oneness that God alone expresses in perfect harmony. We pray for Justina Metropolitan, Tushanta Bishop of Colombo, Kirti Bishop of Kurunagala, and all who have served our diocese as bishops in the past 175 years. We thank God for their faithful ministry among us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our, hear prayer. our prayer. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus, the one who has called us out as a community taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My dear people of God, to crown all things, there must be love, to bind all together and complete the whole. And let us the peace of Christ rule in our hearts, the peace of the Lord, be always with you. And also with you. May God who gives patience and encouragement give you a spirit of unity to live in harmony as you follow the Lord Jesus Christ so that with one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus and the blessing of God all compassionate the Father the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always Amen let us go in peace and love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ Amen Jesus is calling, just like the first call, calling all sinners, calling again, calling to freedom, calling to freshness, calling to
is calling just like the first call calling for deacons calling again calling for service calling for sharing calling for sending come share God's plan Jesus is calling just like the first call calling for faithful calling again calling for caring calling for courage calling for counsel come Christ proclaim Jesus is calling just like the first call calling for name